understand it's not necessary for people to believe this information in order to weaken democratic institutions. You just have to flood a country's public square with enough raw sewage. You just have to raise enough questions, spread enough dirt, plant enough conspiracy theorizing that citizens no longer know what to believe. Once they lose trust in their leaders, in mainstream media, in political institutions, in each other, in the possibility of truth, the game's won. How dare you? I think we're really just about to experience a viral blizzard. You heard infectious disease expert Michael Osterholm say that we're about to end, experience a, a viral blizzard. One expert now warns of viral blizzard. As the country braces for a viral blizzard. There will be a viral blizzard of COVID cases. The country is facing a viral blizzard. A COVID viral blizzard. A viral blizzard is about to hit the U.S. One infectious disease expert saying a, quote, viral blizzard is about to hit this country the country that has already taken upon this uh, task and now is being held hostage. There is going to be a consequence for irrational resistance. You being unprotected hurts my kids, hurts my mother. You are having your freedom stepped on because of those who believe freedom is about putting other people at risk. This is a, a tyranny of the unvaccinated. You have to have a vaccine passport. How are we going to know who got the booster and who didn't? We're going to have to have a way to track it. Ivermectin a dewormer? Really? Yeah. They need to be called out in shame. People so resistant to reason and relying on lies that they would rather try poison. You're not a horse. You are not a cow. Taking a drug that's given to livestock as an anti-parasitic, it doesn't work. Please don't take it. I am taking a regular dose of ivermectin. Mm. Ivermectin was a boogeyman mm -hmm. early on in COVID. Mm -hmm. You couldn't talk about it. That was wrong. That was wrong. That was wrong. We were given bad information about ivermectin. The real question is why? The entire clinical community knew that ivermectin couldn't hurt you. They knew it. I know they knew it. How do I know? Because now I'm doing nothing but talking to these clinicians who at the time were overwhelmed wow. by COVID and they yeah. weren't saying anything. Not that they were hiding anything, yeah. but it's cheap. It's not owned by anybody and it's used as an antimicrobial antiviral in all of these different ways and has been for a long time for malaria for over almost 20 years yeah so and my doctor who who's now my doctor was using it during covid on her family and on patients and it was working for them so they were wrong to play scared on that didn't know that at the time know it now admit it now reporting on it now because i think that's the job the idea that well you were a vaccine proponent why wouldn't I have been a vaccine proponent? Now there are questions. Oh, no, but I knew at the time. No, you didn't. Yes, what we did. What you knew was that there were people telling you to be resistant to what the government was telling you to do. So today, the New York Times released an article that's getting a lot of play that says that there are thousands of people who say they're still suffering side effects they believe from the vaccine and that those have been ignored. Now, one of them, is nurse practitioner Sean. He says he got his first dose in 2020, had side effects. Just standing up sent his heart racing, stinging pain in his eyes, mouth, groin. Uh, those have gotten a little bit better, but he still has what they call tinnitus. That's a ringing in the ears. Now, 270 million of us got vaccines for COVID. Nearly 677 million doses have been given out. OK, we know that vaccines can have unintended consequences, a.k.a. side effects, but nobody's really talking about it because they're too afraid of blame and they just want it to go away. But the problem is people like Sean and me and millions of others who still have weird stuff with their blood work and their lives and their feelings, you know, physically are not going away. Let me first thank you for having the courage to bring this out, this topic out. I've waited three years for this moment. So this is really important to me and thousands of other people just like me. 
why do I believe this? It's not a belief, it's a fact. And as soon as I was injured within 24, within 20, uh, 15, 20 minutes of my first dose, I had paresthesias, numbness tingling up and down my injected arm that over days spread to my face and my eyes. I went to see a neurologist. He ran some tests. He's like, well, this is all new. We don't know much about it, but the hospital is going to mandate it. You should get a second dose. And everything in my medical mind and my in my bones was telling me, no, if you have a reaction after something, don't do it again. But the pressure was immense. And then three weeks rolled around. I got a second dose. And after that, everything blew up. I went from being a healthy, 100% healthy, fully functioning nurse to in a complete downward spiral of health. I had a myriad of symptoms. Um, and in the succeeding years, have you gotten any clarity from doctors that, yeah, we are seeing this, uh, or from the drug manufacturer putting out any information about what could happen as a side effect? No, as a, as a research nurse practitioner and somebody who worked on vaccine research, I, I thought after I was injured, there would be people to help me. I'm like, I'm in New York City. I will have the, the there will be medical people ready to help me. There must be interest to find out what happened or what went wrong in, with me. I reached out to my political representatives. I reached out to the NIH, the CDC, the FDA. I got no answers. No one wanted to touch it. Mm. I got token responses back or no response. And so I went on a mission to research myself and help others. What have you found out? And uh, what do you see in your blood work? So I said uh, in the early days when I couldn't get answers uh, here at home in America, I sent my blood over to Germany. Mm. And I had help with uh, connecting with German scientists. They were more interested to help me than people here in my own country. It's less political there. That, and that, that testing showed I developed uh, several autoantibodies, many of, the, of them that some theorists or some scientists believe are attributed to this POTS or positional tachycardia that you mentioned, where every time I stand, my heart zooms. So some of my autoantibodies look similar to people with long COVID, and I never had COVID. And, I, and that was proven through is immunological studies of my blood. They could not find any viral antibodies. We don't even really have an official finding on long COVID. Um, and I know that's weird because I say that I have long COVID, but I only say that I have long COVID because the doctors who are treating me are calling it long COVID. And they say that they're not getting a whole lot of support uh, from the government because even though we are spending a lot of money in the U.S., um, on a specific effort to research long COVID, they take a long time. And I think there's really no incentive to get out in front of this because it's just bad PR, right? I mean, nobody's going to get patted on the back for saying, yeah, Sean's right. Uh, there's, there are side effects on some of the vaccines or all of the vaccines uh, that we should be talking about and figuring out how to treat. And there is long COVID and there's lots. Nobody wants to say that because it's all political now. Right. And we're caught in the crosshairs of the politics where, you know, I thought I, all my pro vaccine colleagues would, you know, that championed me on would be there to lift me up and help me. And in fact, they're the ones who turned around, dismissed, denied and tried to censor and bury me. Well, let me tell you something, Sean, I can't uh, help you because I'm no clinician. <laughs> I'm just I'm sick myself. Enough. This country is about the vaccinated and those who choose to put them at risk. The vaccinated are this country. They've all done the right thing. So how long must the majority wait for the stubborn, waiting on people who insist on making themselves and others sick? And there is no valor in being unvaccinated. Not getting vaccinated is what is unfair. This is on you. Apology? Of course not. For every man, there's a woman. And for every dummy, there's a dummy. <laughs> dummy.